Energy Balance Network. They're scientists trying to create a buzz using whatever it takes to challenge the conventional beliefs around the science of obesity. And here's the scientific director talking about what he says are mistaken assumptions about the cause of obesity. Oh, they're eating too much, eating too much, eating too much, blaming fast food, uh, blaming sugary drinks, and so on. And there's really virtually no compelling evidence that that, in fact, is a cause. Steve Blair gets research funding from Coke, and using Coke's money, he created the Global Energy Balance Network to promote the concept of energy balance in the media and in the research community. But the industry funding was not disclosed on the website until a challenge by Canadian obesity expert Dr. Yanni Friedhoff, who tipped off the New York Times. I think it's a good thing that people are being made more aware of the existence of these sorts of organizations. Be okay. Be okay. Be okay. It's not the first time Coke has sponsored the pro-exercise message. Two years ago, the company was applauded for these apparently healthy ads. But it takes almost 45 minutes to work off just one can of Coke. And the scientific consensus is clear. Exercise can never make up for overeating. At best, exercise slows down weight gain. It's not going to prevent obesity. It might slow down its development, but it's certainly not going to prevent it. It's definitely not going to treat it. Industry funding of science has raised questions before. Funding science to create doubt was a tactic used famously by the tobacco industry. If the health risks are uncertain, it can delay taxes and other public health measures. But at the same time, scientists need research funding. And right now, government agencies are encouraging public-private research partnerships. These partnerships are not going to be looked upon kindly by history. I mean, just like we do now with tobacco, we think, how do we let them do that? I suspect 20, 30 years from now, we'll be saying the same thing about the food industry. Being transparent about industry funding might not be enough to eliminate the risk of conflict of interest. Many studies have shown that industry funding can skew scientific conclusions. Meanwhile, Koch, in a statement, says it will continue to fund science in accordance with the standards set out by the research institutions. Kelly Pro, CBC News, Toronto. So overall, that was a really good uh, little clip there. And so what's happening like, is just that these companies are, you know, the food companies are funding researchers to, who, who, who promote uh, things, you know, that they want, other, you know, exercise or, or do studies that show that, uh, you know, saturated fat or cholesterol is not bad for you. Um, and so basically they're, they're funding these organizations and getting the research that they want or, or supporting, you know, researchers who talk about other things like exercise. And so it's just muddying the water even more. Um, people are really confused. They just see that things are good and bad, coffee, coconut oil, meat, one day butter, you know, and they're just totally confused. So what I'm suggesting is that each of you do your own research you have to look into this study. When you look at study, you have to look at the studies that are available to really understand what's going on. And you have to look at the the um, the companies that are sponsoring the study. And so you've got a lot of studies, dairy industry. They're putting money into um, into everything, you know, into studies and marketing boards. They're they're paying money to. Dietetics, dietitians, you know, these, these uh, boards that are supposed to be looking after our health. They're, they're uh, lobbyists, they're corrupting the, you know, the FDA and those types of things, organizations. And they're, you know, a lot of money gets, goes into marketing through the government, like the dairy boards and stuff like that. And so it's just pervasive and these companies are going to muddy the water just like they mentioned with the tobacco industry. So... You have to, and also a lot of common sense. I mean, just understanding what the basic foods, the whole foods that are are natural, um, and avoiding the processed foods. Looking at calories of fatty foods, even things that are perceived as carbs, donuts, um, cakes, and looking at the high calorie amount of these foods, um, and looking at studies on saturated fat and cholesterol. And uh, looking, looking at sites like nutritionfacts.org, who do a lot of the upfront work 
understanding the plant-based doctor's uh, message, which is like Dr. McDougall, Dr. Gregor, Dr. Uh, Neil Bernard, T. Colin Campbell, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. And so, you know, but you just can't look at what somebody says. You have to, you have to, at the end of the day, do the research yourself and uh, use common sense. Look at the cultures that had, are the longest living cultures and healthiest cultures without cancer, without heart disease. It's just not a, it's a Western issue. You got to read, uh, look at uh, books like the China study, uh, start solution, prevent and reverse heart disease. Um, and really, you know, understand what healthy foods are. And that's what I've done. So now none of this stuff really bothers me. I, I'm not, it's, it's not a confusing thing. If I see a message, you know, you, you, you can just discard these messages easily. So education is the key. Each of us it takes, you know, we can't rely on these other companies and governments and media and websites to, to basically, you know, give you the truth. You have to, uh, do your own work and, and find that out. So hope that helps you guys. Talk to you later.